Major League Baseball Home Video presents Prime Nine, Major League Baseball's best. Position by position, they are Major League Baseball's most dynamic competitors in the high-energy house rocket video Prime Nine. Go cap to cap with baseball's best. Exclusive interviews and off-the-field footage reveal their passions and personalities. Hosted by the wizard himself, Ozzy Smith, Prime Nine lets you see your favorite stars like you've never seen them before. If I played you right now, I know exactly how to play you because I've been scouting you for the last 10 years. And I've been scouting a lot of other players. I've always used music to kind of inspire me a little bit. When I was a kid, we were always going to visit and doing things for the less fortunate. I feel it's necessary. I feel I have the capacity to do it, and I'm going to do it as long as they, they would like me to. Give me a stock car. I'm going to do something good. Tell me, are you still the kid? At heart. <laughs> At heart, yeah. Prime 9, Major League Baseball's best, is available where videos are sold. The journey began in June, 1991. Today, history was made when the owners of the National League and American League unanimously approved Florida's first Major League Baseball team. One year later, the Marlins took their first step with an eye on the future. The once beaten in a coin flip, Florida Marlins select R. 0028 Johnson, Charles Johnson, a catcher from the University of Miami. In 1993, Florida played its first game, and the face of the Marlins soon began to take shape. But they needed a leader, someone with a proven record who could guide them to their first winning season, take them to the next step. I think everybody has this perception that we went out trying to buy a pennant, trying to buy ourselves into the class of the Braves. You're not going to do that. I think right now, we're in the same division with the Braves, but we're not in the same class yet. At the head of Florida's class of 97 were newcomers Moises Alou and Bobby Bonilla. The Marlins solidified their pitching with Alex Fernandez. He backed up Kevin Brown, who himself had quite a year. The maturation of first draft pick Charles Johnson was the final touch in Florida's 92-win season. A wild card berth and a date in the division series against the National League West division champion, San Francisco Giants. Their first ever postseason game is a scintillating one as they win it in the bottom line, two to one. But then the Marlins had their share of late inning heroics. One more win, and the Marlins would make it to the league championship series in just their fifth year. Devon White provided the offense. In the air to left, Bonds goes back. Bonds to the track. This ball is a grand slam home run. And to slam the door on the Giants, closer Rob Nen. In their first foray into postseason play, Florida didn't lose a game. And this could do it. Council throws him out. The Marlins sweep, and the Braves are next. In Atlanta, the chop came to a stop as Florida caught the eyes of everyone. He's looking at you, kid. Maddox defense betraying him here in the first. He's looking at you, kid. With Fernandez done for the year, the Marlins could have gone belly up. Instead, they beat one Cy Young Award winner after another. And when Kevin Brown got sick, 22-year-old Levon Hernandez 
struck gold. Got him! It's his 15th. We can only wonder if the folks in Villa Clara, Cuba, the hometown of Levon Hernandez, are aware of what's happening in South Florida right now. Back to Atlanta for game six, where the Marlins went back to their ace. Leland lets Brown know that he's finished, and Brown lets him know that he wants to continue. He's looking at you, kid. By Brown, scooped up by Council, to Renteria, and it's over. It would be sweet in any case, but how much sweeter is it that Jim Leland, for the first time in a long and distinguished career as a major league manager, is on his way to the World Series? the Cleveland Indians finished first in the Central Division. But against the Yankees in the Division Series, their bubble seemed about to burst, trailing by one in Game 4. Two out here in the eighth. These Cleveland fans saying, don't let it in. You know, Sandy Alomar, I mean, he's got so many big hits, and they all happen to be home runs this year that... You know, I was sitting there talking to Oral on the bench, and I go, if he hits another home run, I'm going to give him a big kiss. What a gutsy performance he had right there. I mean, that's awesome. I mean, if we don't pull that out, we go home for the year. And now Omar Vizquel with Grissom carrying the win. It was this triumph against the defending champions that first brought the word destiny into the minds of Cleveland fans. Game five brought it to life. Into left center field. Giles is there. Celebrate. There would be a new world champion in 1997. Why not Cleveland? This is the first step. We've still got two more to go. we got four more games to win in Baltimore. But down one game to Baltimore, the Tribe trailed 4-2 in the eighth inning of game two. Then, Marquise Grissom. And the left center field, deep left center field. Track, wall, gone. A three-run home run for Marquise Grissom. And a 5-4 Indian lead in the eighth. The series moved to Cleveland where a classic pitching clinic unfolded as Oral Hirschheiser and Mike Mussina locked horns. That is 15 strikeouts for Mussina and LCS record. Then, tied at one in the 12th, an amazing play. If you're going to put the squeeze on, now would be a good time to do it. Speed on it third. Here comes Christian. Johnson arguing that the ball was fouled off by this gal. It looked like it was a foul ball to me. Unbelievable. The next day, another bizarre play at the plate. Another sign of destiny. In the dirt, to the plate, the runner is safe. Justice scores, and now here comes Alomar. Two runs score. Tied at seven in the ninth. Two on, two out, and Sandy Alomar could cap a tremendous night. In the left center field. Cleveland had captured its fifth consecutive one-run victory, but they need one more to reach the World Series. Once again, pitching was the story. This time, it was Mussina against Charles Nagy. Scoreless baseball into the 11th. That's when a wondrous series subplot unfolded. Before the game, Tony Fernandez hit a batting practice ball that bruised Bip Roberts. So Tony took his place and came up to bat in the 11th. That's well hit in the air to right. Track, wall, gone. And the Indians take a 1-0 11th inning lead. Tony Fernandez. 
Hernandez breaks through here in the 11th. Indians trying to win this 1997 ALCS. Nine run on with two out. Strike three called, and the Indians are headed back to the World Series. Presenting the 1997 World Series, featuring the Cleveland Indians and the Florida Marlins. The Marlins had become the passionate prize of South Florida, but a special bond had formed with the team in an area of Miami known as Little Havana. Here in South Florida, we have about 1.2 million, 1.5 million Hispanics. About half of those are Cubans, and Cubans have suffered a lot of other political situation, you know, having to leave their country. They've been suffering a lot lately, and lately, unfortunately, it's about 40 years. But in the face of sorrow, baseball in Cuba has always flourished, and the proud Cuban baseball fans now in Florida now had a hero of their own. For Cuba's second greatest import was a 22-year-old man who defected in 95. Pitcher, Levan Hernandez. Levan is the best. He's a young man, he's got a lot of talent. He's a good one. Make us proud about uh, he's a Cuban. Well, I tell you what, I never seen nothing like this. Uh, uh, it's, it's something you can believe when you didn't see it, uh, because, you know, they everywhere you go, and all you hear uh, is leave on your money. No, yo me siento bien. A mí me well, I love the fans acting like that. I love signing autographs. I love people responding to me. I feel like I'm one of them. I feel a part of this community. And I don't feel any pressure from it. I feed off of it. And uh, I just love Miami. Okay, yo amo Miami. And with Levan, the Game 1 starter, pride ran rampant. For the first time ever, a baseball season could both begin and end in Florida. This is super special for us, the World Series in Florida. For the first time, we are super happy, we're glad. We don't know how to explain our joy. Viva Levan, viva Miami. On the menu inside the stadium, game one. As 39-year-old Oral Hirschheiser prepared to face a man 17 years his junior, one whose name was now on the lips of everyone. With flash bulbs popping, the first pitch of this World Series is a called strike. He's such a good player and he's such a young kid and what saddens us all and the reason why he puts all our hearts is because he's not here to share that with his family. They're in Cuba. Although they hear it in the radio, it's not the same as sharing it and seeing it with him. And that's why he's got everybody's hearts here. But facing his first batter, Levan was brought down to earth. And now he slams one down the right field line, possibly extra bases, Sheffield up with it. Not nearly in time to get the Speedy Roberts. Hernandez then took on Omar Vizquel, who sacrificed Roberts to third. After Manny Ramirez walked, Dave Justice sought to silence the pro player stadium crowd. A liner to center. It drops for a hit, and the Indians grab the lead. No, it's all in. You know, I wasn't nervous. They scored a run off me, um, and then I was able to get the three outs, but... I settled down and I felt fine, but I wasn't nervous at all. Come on, Levon. Two and two. Settle down. Only give up one run, that's fine. We can get it back. Remarkably composed for a 22 year old. 2 2 pitch. And it's tapped towards second. Council. His play is to first, and they're out of the inning. Following the shaky start, Levon sharpened up and displayed a poise that belied his years. 
I think he really started settling in a little bit more. He um, started to um, uh, loosen up a little bit and um, got on the mound and was making some good pitches. And, and when he does that, he's very tough to hit. Ball, strike three. And the fans reacting in anticipation of Hernandez striking out the side. Which he does. Over on the other side, Oral, too, gave up a run to tie the game at one. But he hit a bump in the fourth. It began with an uncharacteristic four-pitch walk to Bobby Bonilla. Hirschheiser was then late covering first on a sharp infield grounder by Darren Dalton. Hit toward the hole, Roberts lunges, stops it. Who's going to cover it? Nobody. The boy does! The boy does! With first and second and no one out for Moises Alou, a question of strategy was broached. With their leading RBI man for the season at the plate, Alou knocked home 115. Would you consider letting Alou lay one down here? I was the RBI man this year for this team, so I mean, he's not crazy. He wasn't going to give me a bunch. So. We've got first and second, no out, and Alou's up, and I get him 0-2. And then I just threw a bad pitch. The 0-2 pitch, hit deep to left. If it's fair, it's a three-run homer. It's out of here. It hits the foul pole, and the Marlins grab a 4-1 lead. Sacrifice? What sacrifice? I never play in front of 67,000 people. I never play in front of the world. I hear come 1-1 one, one ball game. I hit a three-run home run. But can't beat that. And 67,000 plus had another treat in store. I think it was two or one count. And I told myself I was looking for something up in the zone. I was looking for something up in the zone a little bit more. And when the pitch started coming, I saw it. And then I was like, wow, it's, it's going to be a pretty good pitch to hit. And now this ball is bolted. Back to back and into the upper deck. Pitchers kind of like to give them up when they're far. You hate to give up the ones that get paint on the ball on the backside of the fence because you go, oh, just a little bit, and I wouldn't have given up a home run and an out or oh, my outfielder could have got that. But when you give them up like that, it's like they're all worth the same, so you might as well give them up a long way. I've grown up in Florida all my life. I've been here since I was five years old. Always wanted to see Major League Baseball in Florida, and now I have a dream come true. And I can't believe I'm going to a World Series game. This is awesome, awesome. This is unbelievable, unbelievable. The first back-to-back -back World Series home run since 1986. Gave Levon plenty of cushion. But then, why take chances? 3-2 pitch. Hernandez somehow came up with that ball. Watch the reaction of Hernandez. This ball is really small. Down he goes. He's got it. There's the throw, and Roberts is gone. Cleveland cut the deficit to three, but that soon changed when Jeff Conine, in his first ever World Series at bat, singled home Gary Sheffield to make it six to two. That marked the end for baseball's premier postseason pitcher. With eight wins, one loss, one save, and a 1.83 earned run average in his postseason career, Hirschheiser, in just five and one third innings, would be tagged for an improbable seven earned runs. Still in sixth, Jim Tomei made it a point to bring Cleveland back in the face of skeptical Florida fans. But Tomei's looking, he's pointing his bat, he thinks he's Babe Ruth. In the air to left, this ball is well hit. Alou is going back. It clears the scoreboard for a home run. There is the first home run for Jim Tomey in the postseason and since mid-September to the opposite field where many of his home runs go. Two more hits, and Levon's night was also through. But he had exceeded expectations. Gotta love him, gotta love him. Okay. Woohoo! He's taking tonight's game like it's any other game. Well, not exactly. That happens in the heat of battle. You um, you get that way because I felt that I could have done a lot more than I did, and I could have helped my team a lot more. Um, I've never done that before, but I think it's because 
we're in the finals, we're in the World Series, and I just feel that every game is important, and um, I didn't do as well as I should have done. The team understood, and um, they backed away from me a little bit when I threw my glove, but they understood that I was upset with myself. Leading by three in the top of the ninth, Florida called on closer Rob Nen, who with one out, gave up a pair of hits. But with the tying run at the plate in the person of Tome, Nen put a new blip on the radar gun. He can't hit you, he can't hit you, come on, fight! And down he goes. And that one was ratcheted up to 102. He is throwing some high-octane gas. Here it is, 101, 102, see what you can do with it. Alomar has already had some big moments this postseason. Does he have one more in him? Hey, one more strike! Come on, one more strike! The one-two pitch. Got him! Game one belongs to the Marlins as Nen closes it with a flourish. Florida had won the first round. But that in no way diminished the confidence of Cleveland fans. How many players on your uh, franchise have uh, World, I mean, uh, World Series experience? Four, four five, is it? Four, five. Uh, doesn't matter. The though. Indians have it 15 matter. experienced you got World experience. Series players. All right, experience. Experience. Depth. They're losing. Marlins won nothing. We're going all the way. You don't have Kevin Brown. You don't have Levon Hernandez. You don't have the bench of Eisenreich. You don't have uh, Cliff Floyd, our secret weapon. We don't need them. Yes, you do need them. With our ace, Kevin Brown, you know, we're feeling real confident. But we have to be careful because Cleveland is a very powerful team. Go Pride! Go Pride! Go Pride! For Cleveland in Game 2, Chad O.J., the losing pitcher of record in the two American League Championship Series games Baltimore won. His opponent? the winner of two games in the NLCS, Kevin Brown. Brown hadn't lost a decision in his last 14 starts, but he made a pitch to change that, with one out in the top of the first. Vizquel jolts one to right, back goes Sheffield, a way back, and it's off the top of the wall. Vizquel on his way for two, and he'll stop there, missing a home run by about a foot. One out later, Justice made Brown pay, with Omar now on third. Ready! This ball is lined to right, and they're on the board first. Justice comes through in the first inning again. While CJ took the mound to try and calm his pitcher down, an attentive Charles Johnson Sr. displayed a father's knack for insight. Yeah, Charles worked hard at calling games, you know, and, uh, and Kevin has a lot of confidence in him. And dad has a lot of confidence in his son to keep justice from reaching second. Running situation, he may run. Oh, but he doesn't have the chin of loss of speed now. No, he don't have that kind of speed, or the Monty Griffin speed. But he'll run. There he goes on the pitch to Williams, challenging Johnson. Never a good idea. Yes! There you go! Yes! There you go! There you go! There you go! It remained one to nothing. And in the bottom of the first, Gary Sheffield had a moment of fear, with Edgar Renteria on first and one out. There goes Renteria, and the pitch hits Sheffield, and he is hopping around in pain. Boy, that hurt. Right here. That hurt. Yeah, that's, that, that hurt us. This ball just kept running in on him. Running fastball from OJ, and Sheffield, who's one of those guys that dives in, had one nailed him. Well, you know, I've been hit there before, and... and that's the same hand where I broke my thumb, and, and this is the uh, same wrist I had a problem with in Milwaukee. So this is a bad hand for me, and uh, to get on this hand, hit on his hand, and then it's 75 degrees, and you don't have no feeling, you know, you think something is wrong. Sheffield shook it off, and that put runners on first and second. Then, following a fly to center by Bonilla, Jeff Conine looked to get his second series RBI. Having seen Conine and Justice play Deja Vu, Moises Alou had to wonder if with men on, he could repeat his game one success. Almost. There we go. A long drive to left. Back at the track and caught back there by David 
justice. I still having nightmares about that fit. I mean, I'm not trying to talk bad about OJ, but I, he made a mistake, and I should have taken advantage of him. I was so mad because that was a hanger breaking ball, and that would have been my second three-run Johnson right there. And I would have, I mean, that would have been a different ball game. Alou helped soothe the pain with a leadoff double in the fourth, and that provided Johnson with a bevy of options. Well, let's see if Charles Johnson here, with the runner at second and nobody out, tries to hit one to the right side to move him. Let's go, one off pitch is tapped out in front of the plate. Alomar takes the third. They got him. I charged the ball. I saw uh, Moises Alou had a bad jump in second base. So I, I took a chance to throw the ball at third base. It was a risky chance, but I made a perfect throw, and the guy was out. So I, I think it was uh, an aggressive play by myself. And uh, I'm glad that I threw the third base because uh, I think that cut the rally down. Let's go. On to the fifth where the Indians staged an uprising. <laughs> Two singles here in the fifth, first and second with one out. Florida fans felt fear for the World Series hit machine, Marquise Grissom, had a predetermined plan. I worried myself to death before the game, worrying about, I'm in the eight hole, are they gonna pitch to me? But I got the idea after about 20 minutes before the game that I'm gonna go up there and I'm gonna swing the bat. And if the ball's around the play, I can hit it. But if I go up there and dig a hole for myself, being defensive, I'm uh, coming right up out of my game. And I didn't want to do that. Lamaria can't get this one. Williams is being waved home by Newman. Here's the throw for the load, not in time. Three singles produce a run in the fifth and Cleveland is back in front. With that single, Little Mr. October had tied Roberto Clemente with hits in 14 straight World Series games. Both Grissom and Alomar moved up when O.J. sacrificed. A decision had to be made. Two out, first base open. To bip or not to bip? Even though Vizquel has two base hits in this ballgame, I would definitely think about trying to get Bip Roberts to chase something out of the strike zone rather than going right after him. He's a much better hitter than Vizquel is. And there's some proof. Renneria can't get to it. One run home. Here comes the second. And it's 4-1 to one, Cleveland. Hey. Listen. That's quiet. The silence of the fans grew deeper when Sandy Alomar gave his dad a memorable 54th birthday present. Sandy Alomar! Here's a rocket to left, and this one's not coming back. The fourth home run of this postseason for Sandy Alomar makes it 6 1 Cleveland. Well, if you can tell that you can hit a breaking ball any harder than Alomar just hit that one, you'll never make a believer out of me. Six earned runs in just six innings for Kevin Brown, and a 6-1 to one Marlins defeat. Cleveland cut bait with a split. Now, it was back to the Jake. All right, all right, there we go, there we go. All right, baby. All right. We're on the board, we're on the board. When the series moved to Ohio, there was a change in the weather. Gone were those balmy breezes. This was October by the lake. The only thing we can tell fans is to come down and be dressed for some uh, inclement weather. A little rain, maybe a little thunder, maybe a little snow. Who knows? And uh, by the way, turn on the weather channel and see if there's a big great glob over Lake Erie. You know, when you're playing, the, your adrenaline is going and your body is a lot warmer than, you know, it appears to be. The only advantage we have is uh, to have inj injured players. Uh, it's hard to get loose and uh, if you haven't played in the cold weather for a long time, it's going to be more difficult to greet the baseball. It's a World Series and, um, I mean, you just can't worry about cold weather at this point, really. You're trying to win ball games. In the face of a 23-degree wind chill, Florida called on Al Leiter to start game three. Cleveland went with Charles Nagy. And as the game got underway, the hot topic was whether the cold would affect the bruised wrist of Gary Sheffield. 
He was hit on the back of the hand in the area of the wrist in game two, continued in the game, and reports no ill effects entering game three. Well, it's sore, but, in, you know, I had it, you know, padded pretty good. I had taped, and then I have a pad over the tape, and uh, that day I think I was wearing sleeves also, so that kind of protected a little bit, you know, the, the impact of the pitch. And, and the guy wasn't throwing 95 miles an hour also, so he was throwing about 88, 90 miles an hour, so that helped also. The 2-1 pitch is hit high and deep to left. Got it, got it, Bip got it. It's gone. That's all right, Charlie. That's their highlights for the night. Perhaps. But leading by one in the bottom of the first, it was Lighter's turn for low lights. Bounce to Lighter. He backs up to snare it and then drops it. Roberts is aboard and we wait for the scoring. He won. With two out and runners on first and second, Matt Williams caught a break. Come on, Matt, you're the man! Woo! Hit into right center field, but in a good spot, and it drops. Roberts scores the tying run. Justice speeds to third. It sounded as if he might have broken his bat. But there was no justice for Leiter. Another broken bat. And the Indians have the lead. Look at Leiter. He's saying to himself, I'm pitching in on their hands, I'm busting their bats, and I'm losing. Johnson opened the floor to third with a solid base hit. And after Craig Council struck out, Nagy began living on the edge. Ball four, and the bases are loaded for Sheffield. And now the 3-1 pitch. He walks in a run to tie the game. Nagy towed the line again in the fourth against a locked-in Darren Dalton. In the air to right center and very well hit by Darren Dalton. And with the win, you can tell it goodbye. A 3-2 lead for Florida, but not for long. For in the bottom of the fourth, it was Leiter who suffered the base on balls bugaboo. He walked Alomar, Tome, Grissom, and Vizquel to tie the game at three. Ramirez took the stage with two out. Ramirez rolls it slowly. Bonilla coming in. Throws, double clutches, the ball gets away. One run is home. Now here comes Grissom, two run score. He had a play if he made it cleanly. Once he double clutched, he might have been better off holding it. Again, there's two outs, and I'm playing uh, Manny Ramirez extremely deep because he can hit the ball well. I mean, he, he, he's got great power, and he hits the ball crisp. He hits the ball hard. I actually got a very good jump on that ball. And, uh, you know, as I talked to Tommy S Sant looking back, I probably had to grip the first time, but I didn't quite feel it. So I went back again to, to make sure I could feel it, and I wind up throwing it away. Cleveland had scored three to take a 5-3 to three lead with the benefit of just one infield hit. In the fifth, Cleveland fans began to feast as Leiter experienced an unfortunate recurrent nightmare. One man out, one man off. Really all night I was looking for a ball out over the plate to drive. Up the alley, little double here. Fastball high 2-0. Oh. You know, it almost seems like he's running into a danger zone here with Tommy. He's been behind on him every time he's been up there. Always behind, and Tommy with a chance to rip at him. And he does rip it to deep right field and gone. We got the feeling that, that it was over at that time. We, we had, a, had a real good feeling that with the home run, it, it put us over the top and that we could relax a little bit. The confidence was understandable. The Jake very rarely let four run leads slip away. But with one on in the top of the sixth, 
Jim Eisenreich issued a most unexpected warning. Deep to right, and Eisenreich has connected. Goodbye. I think the Jim Eisenreich home run was the biggest hit of the game. Yeah, I thought Izzy's hit was a, a big key in that, in that particular ball game. When he put us within two, two runs, and that's when guys went to believe that we, we're going to win this game. When I came in the dugout after Izzy hit the home run and got us two back, um, you know, I, everybody was upbeat and said, whatever it takes, you know, we got to keep going, whatever it takes. And that, you know, you have to have that attitude right now because there is no tomorrow. In the bottom of the sixth, Bonilla followed Dalton's creed. Still battling a sore hamstring, he came up big with a runner on second. The 3 2. Smash. Bonilla dives to smother it. Throws across the diamond to Dalton. What a play! Bonilla didn't double clutch this time, and his brilliance kept the Cleveland lead at two. In the top of the seventh, the call went out to hometown boy Brian Anderson to maintain that lead. But Brian quickly surrendered a single to Craig Council, and a ground out by Devon White moved Council to second. Jackson was summoned to face the first Colombian ever to play in the World Series, Edgar Renteria. From the beach! It's this one sharply and through the middle. They'll be within one. Council is being waved home. Grissom's throw is cut off, and it's seven to six. Ooh. Suddenly, it's a one-run game, and here's Sheffield. A called strike. I see the way Marquise was playing me pretty much to left center. And um, I just told myself, don't try to pull the ball because, you know, they position it, you know, to catch anything I hit over there unless I hit it out the park. So I just told myself just to, you know, stay on the ball. And if, it, and if he throws away, he just try to go away. And uh, he threw it out over the plate. 1-1 one, one pitch, hammered to deep center field. Grissom on the run. It short hops the wall. It's going to tie the game. Renneria being waved home on the double by Sheffield. Seven up. The beauty of baseball had ambushed the tribe for a game that appeared to be over was far from it. Come the bottom of the seventh, Felix Heredia was in his third solid inning of work, and he was now getting plenty of help from the Florida defense. Tony with a drive. He's hit one earlier. Sheffield's going back. Sheffield to the wall with a leap. He caught it. He caught it. He caught it. The play the series the play of the World Series from Gary Sheffield as the game moved to the ninth it became a test of survival the frigid winds blew stronger as the night grew longer Eric Plunk walked Bonilla to open Florida's ninth and with the cold and the hamstring, the question arose. Do you pinch run for Bonilla? In that particular case, I'd already used Kurt Abbott, and I wouldn't have had another infielder had I run for Bobby if somebody got hurt. So that was the main reason there. The point became moot when Dalton pulled the trigger. Rifles this one by the diving Fernandez. Bonilla is going to try for third with a sore hamstring. Here's the throw, and it gets by Williams, goes into the camera well. And Bonilla's waved home. I was just fired up, you know, uh, caught a break there. I was able to go home, and all I could say to myself was, yeah, we got the lead. And that's all I was thinking about. I took a gamble, and it paid off. And if ever there was a reason for Cleveland fans to leave their seats, it was the carnage that followed. First and third, one out. Quick throw to first, and it gets away, but then it hit the umpire. Now Tommy can't pick it up in time, and Dalton slides home. Unbelievable. With the runner going, and Fernandez covering, the hit and run works to perfection. And now they have runners at the corners again. One, two, ten, take them out. Nervous. Hitting it hard, Fernandez has it bounce away. Oh! No! It's all unraveling for the Indians here in the ninth. Third error of the inning. No errors, all game, third error of the inning. Almost everything that can go wrong in a single inning has gone wrong here. 
as a 7-7 game turns to 10-7 and now more. Sheffield on the first pitch, knocks home two more with a single to right. Merlin fans are happy. After Benia knocked home the final two runs, the onslaught, mercifully, was over. It's going to sound like a football score. It's 14 to 7. Dolphins over the Browns, and with the likes of Jim Brown nowhere to be found, the chant of Marlins fans filled the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're a touchdown ahead with three outs to go, in baseball, that's pretty good. But of course, it had to be better than good. For as Rob Nen struggled through a 43-pitch ninth inning, the Indians closed the gap. One run home. Two runs home. 14 to 11. Mm -hmm. And one base runner away from bringing the tying run to the plate. The Marlins got seven in the top half. Cleveland with four in the bottom half. Slow roller. Council. Charging. Throwing. It's over. The second most runs, the second longest game in World Series history. Well, I think it was it was ugly for 26 outs for me. And when they hit that ground ball to Council, it became the most beautiful game I ever saw in my life. I knew it as bad as I felt about it. I knew that the players were really probably feeling worse. And uh, there's no time in a, in a series to feel sorry for yourselves. And uh, just really tried to, tried to give everybody a, a, a little ray of sunshine. First of all, it's cold. And I've never seen a masterpiece game in the cold yet. We call the boys of summer for a reason, and I think people are missing that. Of course, no two baseball games are ever alike much like the new element that precipitated game four. I'm in the Christmas spirit with this snow. Yes, that's snow. It really snowed heavily here in Cleveland. Nothing that really stayed on the ground, but batting practice had to be stopped for a little while. Both clubs did hit tonight, despite the fact that it was very cold. This is baseball by Courier and Ives. The snow had stopped by game time, just in time for Hall of Fame pitcher Phil Necro to make his series pitch. Right down the middle of the plate, again. Something the Cleveland pitchers certainly hope to duplicate. Gee, absolute pure petrol. <laughs> With a game time temperature of 38 degrees, it was the coldest World Series game ever played. And Tony Saunders, a 23-year-old left-hander, sought to loosen up. His opponent, 21-year-old right-hander Jarrett Wright, was the son of former big league pitcher Clyde Wright. And Jarrett was wise beyond his years. If you get caught up in the World Series of, you know, everything going on around you, it's, uh, I mean, you wouldn't be able to do it. You just try to go in, you know, like a normal game and stay within yourself and, uh, you know, know what you can do and just keep it, you know, everything, you know, right around you, keep it intact. The youngest pitcher to start a World Series game since Brett Saberhagen in 1985 got off to a rousing start. It's 2 2 pitch. But Jared quickly faced a test. One most rookies never take. Renneria hits one into right and it drops for a hit. Sheffield followed with a walk, putting two men on with one out. For Jarrett, a pivotal moment to be sure. The one two is bounced to second. Hernandez throws, takes to the scale on the first double play. Jared had passed his first round with flying colors. But this was a match of two rookie pitchers, the first such series game in 14 years. And with one out, Omar Vizquel began to make life miserable for Saunders. 
it just goes to show how quickly a team can pull one over on you. Hey, take a look at Ramirez as he steps in the box. When's the last time you saw a guy wear stocks like that? Are they up over his pants? Come on, Danny, let's go! Hey, sit here, let's go! He's not exactly styling, <laughs> but I, I think warmth rather than fashion is here the number one Santa concern Claus. here. Here comes Santa Claus. In the air to the right, Sheffield going back. Sheffield to the wall, goodbye! Forget about the socks. It's the way he sucked that baseball that matters. It's a big momentum starter for us in that game because of, you know, the way we, the way that we lost game three wasn't pretty, but for him to come up and hit that big two-run homer in the first inning is, is sets us in motion for game four. But Tony Saunders wasn't out of danger yet. Trailing two to nothing, he relinquished a single to Williams and paid dearly for it. A liner for a hit. Toward the gap. If it gets through, a one might score. On his way to third is Williams. Newman's waving him home. Could be close on whether he is throw. Set. Great slide and home plate there by Matt Williams to avoid the tag. Well, Charles was standing at the plate, and uh, as I got closer to him, he started to come up the line. And I knew that the throw, you know, he was going for the ball, the throw was going to be up the line a little bit. So I tried to go to my left and uh, tried to slide around him. It wasn't pretty, but it worked. The three to nothing score held fast until the third, when Cleveland scratched out still another run. Then with Justice on second, Williams on first, and nobody out, Alomar broke his bat quite nicely. You're here, man. The 3-1 pitch is hit through the hole on the right side. Justice being waved home by Newman. Sheffield's throw is cut off by Dalton. It's 5-0. When Jim Tomei walked to load the bases, Tony's night came to a close. The Marlins sought to stem the tribe with Antonio Alfonseca, who made the trip to face Tony Fernandez, still with nobody out. Come on, Tony! 1-1 one, one pitch line to center. The Indians pour it on. One run home, and they'll play it station to station. 6 nothing on the Fernandez hit. Abruptly, the outburst came to an end. Florida picked up one in the fourth to make it 6-1. to one. And Jarrett's task in the sixth was to keep it that way. But with one out, he walked Darren Dalton. Cleveland hearts so calm up to this point were quickly set aflutter by Moises Alou. And here's a drive. Roberts turns and watches it leave. And just like that, it's six to three. And with one swing of the bat, they figure they have a chance of winning again. More potential trouble for the tribe as Jim Eisenreich then singled. But the rookie persevered. Johnson lines it to Tommy. It's going to be a double play after this little dosy do -si with Eisenreich is over with. The Book of Jarrett, Chapter 6. Baptism by Fire in the World Series. Cleveland scored two more to make it 8-3 to three after 7. And in the 8th, Matt Williams came up with one man on. Matt had hit a World Series home run for the Giants in 89. Now, he sought to become just the seventh player ever to do so for both leagues. But this is a long drive to left, and it is gone. Matt Williams putting the finishing touches on a perfect night. Two singles, a homer, and a pair of walks. Second Indian homer of the night, bringing the score to 10-3 in the eighth. With such a commanding lead in the ninth, it would have taken quite a leap of faith for reliever Brian Anderson to think the Marlins might duplicate their game four explosion. But he made certain with his third straight solid inning of relief. One strike away from a tied World Series. Check swing roller, Anderson. It's down to a best two out of three. The coldest game in World Series history goes to Mike Hargrove's Indians. The 10 to 3 triumph brought Anderson a slew of congratulations, but he made sure to thank each and every person behind his series save. 
I don't know. That was just good manners being raised by my mom. I, I think if the, you know if someone gives you a compliment, if you don't thank them, mom's around, she's gonna give me a little smack. So I know to say thank you after I've been complimented. Cleveland players and fans alike had made a fashion statement in this series, an over-the-top trend that began in August. Uh, enjoy the game. Thank you. Woo! I think in Anaheim, Jim Tommy's birthday, he wears his socks up high, so as a dedication to Jim Tommy on his birthday, that's what we decided to do. Everybody was going to surprise him. So everyone would put their socks up, and I think we won, and um, we never put them back down. They definitely went on a winning streak, and here we are, World Series. World Series. Success spins a yarn that is tough to, well, find a hole in. It's a show of unity for the Indians. They're all doing it, and we do it for the 10th man thing. <laughs> Game five produced a rematch between Oral Hershiser and Levon Hernandez, looking to become the first rookie in 50 years to win two World Series games. And the last game in Cleveland had the fans sky high. Florida, not this year, baby. Are you the real seat ticket holder? <laughs> Hershiser ran into trouble in the top of the second, with Dalton on third and Johnson at the plate. Hopped in the shallow right. It could be trouble. Coming on as Ramirez can't get it. The Marlins have the lead. On a fluke single by Charles Johnson, Dalton scores. Come on, Oral, settle down. Come on, Oral, we're on your side, guys. And he walks Kelso. That put runners on first and second with two out. The batter, Devon White, who to this point in the series was struggling, batting 167 through the first four games. But he lines one over the leaping Roberts and comes through here. A run is home. And they're going to wave Council home. The throw is to second. Now the pitch home. They're going to get it in time. So they get one, but cut down the trail runner at the plate. However, Levon also struggled in his half of the second, with Tomei on third. Line to right, base hit. Beautiful piece of hitting by Alomar, and the Indians are on the board. Hernandez went on to walk the bases loaded, but managed to hold on to the two-to-one lead. And when the inning ended, his teammates held his temper. I was very upset because of the run I had given up and a few of the pitches that I was trying to throw. But they came over and they told me just to keep doing what you're doing because, you know, your approach is right. The pitches you're trying to make are right. You just need to get back into the strike zone the way you're capable of. But, he, you know, his delivery was solid. Everything was good. And sometimes... You know, you throw the ball well, and things don't happen right. And that's, that's what the case was. But with two out in the third, Hernandez walked both Williams and Tomei and opened the door for Alomar to set a postseason record with 19 RBIs. Come on, Danny. Third on him. one -oh pitch. It's given a ride to left. Alou to the wall. It's gone. 4-2 Cleveland. All four runs driven home by Sandy Alomar Jr., whose dream season continues. The first man since 1960 to have 10 RBIs in a World Series had put the Indians up by two. But come the top of the sixth, Hirschheiser, who had retired 10 straight, gave up a single to Sheffield and a walk to Bonilla. Moises Alou had hit a three-run homer off Oral in game one. Cleveland fans did not expect another. A He's a loser! 2-1 pitch, hammered the center. Grissom going back, looking up, out of here. For the second time in this World Series, Moises Alou wallops a three-run homer off Oral Hershiser. Hargrove's lead is gone. He made a big mistake on uh, Alou. That pitch was high in the strikes on slider he hung. And <laughs> You know, in that situation, you hang a pitch with a guy like that, he's going to make sure you pay for it. Levon, meanwhile, stayed calm. The dugout therapy had worked, and he didn't allow another hit till the seventh. Another breaking ball, hit back to it. To second for one. Renneria to first. And a double play. 
Leading by two as the seventh inning came to a close, Levon was displaying a newfound poise. And in the eighth inning, with Jeff Juden now pitching, Florida sought to add to its 6-4 to four lead. I hate to tell you, it's Ballou's comes up again. And Alou, once again, was the spark. Check swing, Juden has it, takes to first. Just in time, or did he pull him off? Safe. Safe. Look at this. Oh, no way. No way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Moises then advanced to second with a stolen base, with the benefit of another bang-bang call that went Florida's way. Alou almost looked like he came off the bag after he went on top of the bag. Roberts held the tag on him. He did come off the bag and should have been out. Alou moved to third, and CJ brought him home. And now Johnson lines it over the drawn-in infield for a very important run. He's killing me. He's just killing me. I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying. With the Marlins holding fast to a commanding lead, one more run seemed of little consequence. But Moises made it happen anyway in the top of the ninth, driving home pinch runner Alex Arias to now give the Marlins an 8-4 to four lead. Little did they know just how important that one run would be. Needing four to tie, the Indians will send up Roberts, Vizquel, and Ramirez against the amazing LeVon Hernandez. Come on, man! Get him, baby! Come on, baby! A bouncer down to Conine, covering is Hernandez. He gets it to him for the first out. Wait a minute. Did he pull him off the bag? Yes, he did. He called him safe. <laughs> he didn't touch the bag. Woo! Ken Kaiser said... He must have come across the bag and then caught it after he crossed. And Roberts is safe. Well, he's saying he missed the bag, is what he's saying. I worked up a hunger watching this thing. Omar Vizquel then singled and brought to a close Senor Octubre's night. He's getting tired. He's getting tired. Hell, he's been in right in here. Leland thanked his rookie and put his future in the hands of closer Rob Nett. Bring on the heat! So that's the first out. Well, he brought on the heat there, didn't he? We need a hit here. Oh, yeah. We definitely need a hit. And when you really need a hit, justice tends to prevail. Through the box, base hit. It'll score two and make it eight to six. Bring him on! Bring him on! There you go! That's the way! That's the way! The double play ball was then thrown away by Council, leaving one man on for Tomei. Give Tomei! He had a ninth inning showdown with Nen in game one as the tying run. Nen won that one. He lines it over Renneria. It's going to be eight to seven. That's two. That's two. That's two. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's the round. of Sandy Alomar, the outcome rested. Cleveland fans couldn't have asked for more. You can end this game. You can run for mayor. You can run for governor. Come on, let's end this. Alomar, who's had such a huge postseason and four RBIs tonight. The one-two. Swing and a high drive to right. Sheffield, not quite to the track. And the Marlins will take a 3-2 lead Home to Florida. It's okay, guys. Come on. Just got to pick up two in Florida. Got to pick up two in Florida. Oh, well. And so this climate-conscious series shifted back to sunny Florida, where the game time temperature for game six was 42 degrees higher than for game four. With their backs to the wall in this sea of sun, the Indians look to game two winner Chad O.J. to keep the ship afloat. Heady stuff for someone who hadn't won a game in June, July, or August. His fans liked the hand they were dealt. But the home fans said, go fish, with their ace on the mound. 
Kevin Brown had the backing of 67,498, the largest series crowd in 34 years. Brown, total domination tonight. Brown, yes! Total domination. We're winning it tonight. No doubt about it. Yes, Johnson, sir. gold glove. We got Sheffield going. to lose getting hot. Brown's out of here. for Fernandez. He's going to be smoking tonight. Smoking. But in the top of the second, Matt Williams got credit for a most generous single. And Brown then walked both Jim Tomei and Marquise Grissom to load the bases. That brought to the plate a man who hadn't had a hit since high school in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Pitcher Chad O.J. We know Chad O.J. can bunt in a sacrifice situation, but that's not an order now. He swings and taps it foul. He actually threw some good pitches to hit, but his ball really sinks a lot. And you know, I was right on it, but it, it just disappeared, you know, under my bat, and I fouled a few balls off. It's a terrific at bat. How many, how many has he fouled off? At least two or three. And I just made up my mind. I'm just going to try to bloop one in the, to the right field side. And he lines the ball in the right field for a base hit. How about that? One run home. Second man being waved in. Johnson leaps to the peg, and by the time he comes down, the Indians are in front two to nothing. You know, when I got the hit, I was just like, oh, go through, go through, go through, and it, and it did. And then I, I looked back, and I saw I saw Tommy score from second. I was like, oh, my gosh, two, score, two runs to score. And I'm like, no way. Because, you know, you're not used to doing that, and you've never done that in a game. And, you know, I hadn't done that since I was a little kid. But I was like, wow, this, this is fun. This is what baseball's about. Of course, Chad's primary purpose was to pitch, something he did most successfully, with a little help from his friends on the defense. center field Grissom on the run Grissom with a fine catch almost 430 feet from home plate and made it look almost nonchalant going to the basket catch did you see that yeah. that was like a Willie Mays type of catch no matter what it wasn't for us OJ was certainly impressed his two to nothing lead remained intact but not for long for Omar Vizquel put on quite a show in the top of the third against a pitcher he was three for 31 against before this series. He goes three and two again, I'm gonna have a stroke. Three, two pitch. Fair ball by the diving Conine and down the line. This scale on his way to second. Sheffield has trouble with it, but Omar will hold with a double. Then on to third. Oh! Get up! Can't take it! Ramirez lifts one to left center field that should at least get a run home. He's going to score right now. He's going to score right now. And Omar can walk home. Now leading three to nothing, OJ seemingly had the Marlins hook, line, and sinker. Most frustrated was Jeff Conine who was Willie Mays by Grissom his last time up. Here's the 1-0 pitch to Kona. And he hits one solidly to left. Coming on is Justice with a skidding catch. Once again, Conine was robbed by the fundamentally perfect Cleveland defense. And since it was doing such a nice job, O.J. thought it only fitting that he help yet again on offense. On to the fifth, and Chad O.J. is the leadoff man against Kevin Brown. First pitch, another base hit. Depending upon how hard he wants to run, maybe extra bases. Looking for a double. Sheffield's throw, not in time. How about this? I'm not the speediest of guys. I, I just kept running as far as I could, and I um, actually got to slide, and, and that, that was fun, too. I got a little strawberry on my knee to, to, you know, to show that to everybody, so um, I took pictures of it last night and everything. <laughs> O.J. tested his wheels on Bip Roberts' base hit, and when Manny Ramirez went deep, Chad came in to score. The first pitcher with two hits and two RBIs in his series since Mickey Lolich in 1968, and the first Cleveland pitcher to drive in a World Series run since 1920. And O.J. right in the middle of three of those four runs. Interesting to see later on as this game moves along if this base running is going to affect Chad O.J. 
Yeah, it, it did. Um, you know, when you're not used to running the bags, it, you know, everything is sped up and, you know, your heart, your heart's pounding, your legs are getting tired. And it, it did carry into the next inning a little bit. And, um, you know, I told him in the sixth inning, hey, if, you know, if I get in trouble, get me out as soon as possible because I don't want to mess this up for anybody. And, you know, I don't want to try to be some type of hero where I'm out there and I start giving up a lot of runs and give up a lead. Florida did score a run in the fifth. And when O.J. walked Sheffield to open the sixth, Cleveland's one-man show gave way to Mike Jackson. It was a most remarkable performance by O.J., who left with a 4-1 to one lead. But a shaky situation got worse when Eisenreich was walked by Jackson, and a ground out put runners on second and third with two out. I'm telling you, this is the end. It has to be Six Six eight, eight. they have to come back, man. And that's when Omar Vizquel made the play of the series. Bouncing ball toward the hole. Vizquel stops it. Throws from the outfield. Oh, man. He saved two runs and ended the inning. Uh, you know, I made this play before. So, uh, you know, it didn't surprise that I made that play, of course. But, uh, you know, the situation just make it a really big play. You know, it, it was a really special moment for me. I think uh, I ran that play number one to all the other ones that I made just because this is the sixth game of the World Series and everybody wants to get things going. Obviously, that was a big rally for them. But, uh, you know, with that play, maybe we set them then down. Jose Mesa is asked to finish this and bring us to only the second Game 7 in the World Series in the last 10 years. But Devon White tripled, and with one out, the passionate Florida fans held their hopes in their hands. And down goes Renneria. Oh, now is the Okay, it's all up to Shep. away from Alomar, and White probably could have scored, but thinks better of it. Whoa. Stay alive! Oh. Stay alive, baby! Stay alive! Roll to third. Williams. Game seven tomorrow night. The Indians had beaten Kevin Brown and the odds. Now, just one game remained. You think I... This is it. Do or die. All the marbles tonight. <laughs> tonight, the Marlins take their first World Series championship home. It was Game 7, the final stop of the journey. Both teams began their quest in Florida. Both would end it here. But only one would claim the crown of baseball's best. Game 7, what it's all about. Win or lose, no one in the park was happier than Levon Hernandez. His mother, Miriam Carreras, received last-minute permission to leave Cuba to join her son for Game 7. Jarrett Wright was handed the ball for the most important game of the year. The first rookie to start a World Series Game 7 since Joe McGrain in 1987. His opponent, 11-year veteran Al Leiter, who retired the first six men he faced with ease but opened the third on an ominous note. And he walks Tommy, who becomes the first man to reach against him. There we go, we got a little action at first. Grissom to the plate. Double, Double play. And the 3-2 pitch hit toward the hole for a base hit. Tommy will stop at second, and Jarrett Wright comes up in a sacrifice situation. It's too bad OJ is enough he can double right now. <laughs> OJ. He'll try it again. And he'll butt it fair. It's a hard bunt. Dalton wanted to go to third, but couldn't get the ball out of his glove. And now has to settle for the play at first with Council covering. After Leiter got the second out with a short pop fly by Vizquel, he faced Tony Fernandez. Well, remember, Tony Fernandez, very good hitter from the right side. He had a line drive to center field in the first inning, so he's not out of this jam yet. And Fernandez with a liner in the center for a base hit. Tommy scores. Grissom is right behind him. It's 2-0 Cleveland. Tony Fernandez, who won the pennant for them with his 11th inning home run at Baltimore in game six of the ALCS. But well, delivers an early hit that could be the decisive hit in the World Series. Could be. Yeah, cheering over. It's not over! 
It's early! <laughs> ah, but it was getting late in a hurry, for both Wright and Leiter had risen to the calling of a game seven. Six with seven strikeouts to his name. Jarrett gave up just one hit through six and carried his two-run lead into the seventh. Bonilla had struggled, but his fans held out hope. Uh, he's capable too. I hope we don't hit on the ground. I go fast in my wheelchair. Fans settle back in after the seventh inning stretch, and Bobby Bonilla launches one to deep right. Bonilla sends one out of here. Following a walk, Jarrett's phenomenal night was over, and the postseason baton was passed in the dugout. The game was now in the hands of the bullpens, both of which had performed admirably. In the eighth, Alphonse Seca had a 1-2-3 inning, but in the ninth, he walked Matt Williams, and after Alomar's fielder's choice, a change was made. Leland goes to Heredia. Slender but hard-throwing left-hander from the Dominican Republic. Very effective in this World Series, including two innings last night. But Tony immediately rips one through the right side for a hit. And Alomar's going to try for third and make it ahead of Sheffield's throw. With one out, Heredia was replaced by closer Rob Nen. Down by just one, Leland and his players knew only too well that there was no margin for error. Now the 2-1. A bouncing ball, potential double play. Now Renneria comes to the plate, and Johnson with the tag on Alomar. Yes! 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 When pinch hitter Brian Giles flied out to left, Nen had successfully given the Marlins one more chance. It's a one-run game as we go to the bottom of the line in Game 7 of the World Series. Down our last three out. Now Lou will be first. A line drive over short. It falls softly in there for a leadoff hit. Mesa then struck out Bonilla and was one strike away from finishing off Johnson. One strike. Max DJ! Base hit, base hit. A line drive to right that drops for a hit. Alou is on his way to third. Ramirez has no play. Runners at the corners with one out. And if you told Craig Council, the rookie out of Notre Dame, that his season would come down to this, he would have had to have believed you were joking. All right. Show some patience. Get a pitch to hit. Mesa's 1-0 pitch. The 1-1 one -one pitch. A deep drive to right. Ramirez on the run. Makes the catch. Tagging is a low. Game 7 of the World Series is tied. A 27-year-old infielder who got his first big league hit just three months prior had sent Game 7 of the World Series into the twilight zone. Top of the 10th. 
then gives up a single to Fernandez, but strikes out the side. Bottom of the tenth. With one out, Mesa allows a single to Renteria. And the fourth ever extra inning World Series Game 7 now swings to Sheffield. Gary Sheffield, earlier tonight, addressed the players in a very emotional speech and talked about winning this thing and winning it for Jim Leland. He goes, and Sheffield grounds it to the left side. It's a tough play, and Descal will eat it. Sheffield is aboard with an infield hit. Angelosi, 34-year-old, well-traveled veteran, switch hitter. That's a strike, one and two. A good pinch hitter through the years. Mesa's one-two pitch to Cangelosi. Taken high. A full count to Cangelosi. Two on, one out, bottom of the ten. Two-two game. The three-two pitch. Called strike three. With the danger far from over, Hargrove calls on the veteran Charles Nagy to face Moises Alou. Alou flies to right, and a classic series game moves on into the night. Jay Powell is on the mound for Florida in the top of the 11th, and he issues a walk to Matt Williams. Fundamental baseball strategy calls for a bunt, but Alomar? Sandy squares, bunts in front of the plate. Powell is on it, pegs it to second, and they get the force. The 0-2 pitch, hit to Council. There's one. Renneria on to ice and right to complete the double play. The Marlins had survived another round, and as Bobby Bonilla came to the plate in the bottom of the 11th, both he and 67,000 fans had the same thought in mind. Hit hard through the middle for a leadoff hit. Now Zahn bats for the first time tonight. Squares to Bunt. He lines it back to the mound. Nagy's got it. Fernandez sneaks in behind, but Bonilla is able to get back. Number 30, the second baseman, Brady. Nagy Diaz. And Council punches it to the right side. Fernandez has it going through. you have to load the bases or did you have a force out of the play it'll be up to Devon White <laughs> Maggie works to White on the first pitch to Fernandez he's got to come home and it is in time to Alamar well he's got another chance right away and that's what it means to be a professional ball player this year in extra innings. Edgar Renteria drove in the winning run. The 0-1 pitch. Yeah. A liner off Nagy's glove into center field. The Florida Marlins have won the World Series. Nothing in baseball quite like it. Every step a player takes is taken for this moment. And if for everything there is a season, this we know. It took the Florida Marlins just five to win the World Series. A man from Ohio lives a 33-year dream when a kid from South Bend scores on a hit by a shortstop from Columbia to help earn a Cuban pitcher the MVP. God bless America. God bless baseball. I'll tell you, you know, everyone written, had written both of us off and we beat the best teams to get here with all the best records and, and both of us deserve to be here. And, uh, I don't think you can find a better finish than in that game right there. Uh, 
uh, that was outstanding. I mean, I never had any doubts on Edgar. I never had any doubt on anybody. I mean, we got a bunch of gamers on this team. We got a bunch of guys that never give up. And that's why we're the champions tonight. It makes all that hard work worth it. You know, while you're going through the season, you ask yourself, why am I doing it? Why am I doing it? Just look around and see, that's why you're doing it. Anybody's going to win the World Series, you want a Jim Leaning to win it because he's a big part of this team and I think he's one of the reasons that we won the World Series. No, I, I can't say five years ago that we would have ever dreamed it would have come this quickly. And, well, they're the world champs and they're full of character and they made South Florida proud. Two days later, seemingly all of South Florida gathered to celebrate their new world champions of baseball. Their thoughts brought to life by Gloria Estefan. on your feet and get loud one more time. Let's go fish! Let's go fish! Let's go fish! Isn't this thing right here a thing of beauty? This is why we all play, ladies and gentlemen, so we can all say we are part of this, a world championship team. And we thank all of you in South Florida for being a big part of that for us. You guys were huge in the World Series. Huge. This is the best World Series party I've ever seen in my life. We partied in San Francisco. We partied in Atlanta. Now we come to party in Miami, baby. Love you all. <laughs> 